Oh, hello there. My name is Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we are talking about editing a really long recording, you know, something that takes an hour, you know, something like that. This could be a wedding. This could be a live stream. This could be a Let's Play video. Anything that's just real long, real long. And today we're going to use a live stream of playing the good old Crash Bandicoot. A lot of the time when you have a bunch of footage like this here, I'll just make a little bit more room for us. It can be really overwhelming because you're like, man, do I really have to watch through this like entire hour of content? What if I miss something? What if I don't pick the right things? But I have three tips to help you do this efficiently and make a nice video. So let's jump into the first tip. Use a marked timeline. Here's what I mean by that. Let's go up here to the media pool, right click and create a new timeline. This one will be called our edit. And this other timeline that we've already made, this is gonna be our raw timeline. So we have edit and raw. On the raw timeline, we're not going to actually edit anything. All we're gonna do is figure out what's here and mark the good parts. This is especially useful if you're doing something like syncing up a bunch of audio or a couple different tracks or multiple cameras or whatever. You can keep everything in sync so you don't have to resync it all the time. But for this, the idea is that you can use the markers on the timeline. If you don't have anything selected and you just find a part that you like, let's just say here for now, and I can hit M on the keyboard and that will make a marker. If I hit M again, it'll bring up this little marker panel and you can add all kinds of things. So let's say we almost died, lol. And now we know just at a glance without having to play through this whole thing again, that, hey, this part, this is where I almost died. So we might wanna use that for our edit. Another thing that's cool about markers is you can hold alt and click and drag and you can actually set a duration for the marker. That's pretty neat. So this is a great way to mark anything in your timeline that you think might be interesting. The other way that you can do it, which I actually like a little better, is by using a clip that you can rename. So if we go up to the effects library, in the upper left corner, and go down to effects, you can grab an adjustment clip and throw this down in the timeline. And I can put this over any part that I want, any part that I think might be good, and I can just squish this down. And now we have a nice little label here which if we go over to the inspector with that adjustment clip selected and go over to file, we can change the name and the color. So this is almost died again. And then in our edit, this lives in the timeline. And here's why this is useful compared to a marker. Remember we have two timelines here. We have the edit, which is empty right now, and the raw timeline. And the idea is we'll go through and cut out different parts that we like, and we can copy them from here and paste them into this edit timeline. And now we still have our labels. And so it's really easy to figure out which part is which. And again, it speeds it up because we don't have to play through this whole thing to realize this is the part where we almost died again. So now down here, let's say there's another part. I'll just hold alt and drag this over. Let's say I watch through this and this is a really cool part. Talking about dogs, right? And now we can grab this and copy it over. And now we know that, oh, this is the part that I almost died. And then I talk about dogs. Hmm, do we want that before or after? And we can change it right here without even having to play through it. It's smart. So the idea is you go through and mark any spots that you really like here, and then you can copy them over to your edit. And the cool thing about this is if you're like, ah, oh, man, I actually wanted the part right before this. It's really easy just to go back to your raw sequence and find that part and go, oh yeah, here it is right before it. And you don't have to do anything fancy. You just grab the part right before it and copy it and put it into your edit. Tip number two, watch things at two times speed. If you have a lot of footage like this, there's pretty much no way of getting around that you have to be familiar with the content. You might be editing this right after you stream or after you record whatever it is. And so you might be pretty familiar with, oh, there was a good part towards the end, there's a good part towards the beginning. But at some point you do have to play this back and at least watch some of it. So what I like to do for something like this is just hit L on the keyboard. Wait, I'm gonna wait for a second. We did it! <laughs> and I can play it back like this. But if I hit L one more time, I can play it back at double speed. Oh, that is terrifying! What is that? Can I kill it? Can I even kill it? then it's literally half the time, right? And you can figure out if things are good or not. It's not really that important that you watch it at normal speed, right? Just like watching YouTube videos, maybe watching my videos. All of this is like, you can't wait. You have to do stuff right then, which is the worst part of Crash Bandicoot. Oh, it comes over here. That's not cool. Ha, huh. those are terrifying. Then you can find a spot that's funny. Those are terrifying. Oh, it comes over here. That's not cool. Ha, huh. 
Those are terrifying. And now you can quickly just sift through everything and pick the very best parts. The last tip is it's okay to cut things out. Sometimes we kind of get married to the project that we're working on. And especially if it's something like this, where, you know, it's from an hour long stream and you're trying to cut down into like a two minute highlight reel, guess what? There are gonna be parts that you like that just don't make the edit and that's okay. I might really like this part about me being terrified, but if the edit's playing too long and it's not as funny as the other ones, then I have to cut it out. And there just isn't really a way around that. That's the freeing part of editing, but also the kind of sad part, because you know, there's parts that people aren't ever gonna see, but that's okay because it's a highlight reel and that's just what it is. So don't be afraid to cut things out. By the way, if you want to make YouTube videos and you're excited about doing that, maybe this is why you're looking into it, we actually have a master training available, which goes through all of the basics of making several different kinds of YouTube videos. I think it'll be really helpful if you're just getting into YouTube, if you wanna do gaming videos or vlogs or anything else, gets you familiar with Resolve, gets you familiar with editing multiple genres. It's just kind of the best. So check that out. There's a link in the description also. I'll catch you next time. Yeah.